about to whack on a little bit of skincare to start the day. I'm really, really trying to be less lazy, basically, when it comes to looking after my face. So for the past, I mean, it's literally been like a week. I'm not winning any awards anytime soon. But for a good week now, every single day, I have been really trying to stick to my morning and evening proper skincare routine. Um, basically, it all started because I went for a facial um, and they are not something I do very often. I probably go for like two a year, I think. I just like someone who knows what they're doing to tell me what I need to do more, basically. <laughs> this time she was like, gonna be honest, you're really dehydrated. She called me a dehydrated little weasel and said, you sort your face out, love. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I think I probably do need to do that, actually. Kind of gave me a little bit of a kick up the bum. And I was like, you know what? I need a proper skincare routine. I need to ask my friends who have lovely skin what the secret is. <laughs> I need to do a little bit of research and find out what I'm supposed to be doing. And it turns out, layering. Moisture, moisture, moisture. So I picked up this, which everyone seems to be raving about at the moment. This is the Curel Intensive Moisture Spray. Deep Moisture Spray. Kind of feels slightly like you're starting your day with your face in the hose, but it's very cooling and very nice. I really like it. And then while my face is wet, I've been following up with this, which is the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid Serum. You literally need like a pea-sized drop all across your face. And I think that basically does a bit of that. I've also been really trying to remember to use an eye cream like a good girl. This is the Autocorrect by Sunday Riley. This was on offer in the January sales, so I thought, you know what? I'll pick that one up. I've been locking it all in with this one, which is here, there and everywhere at the moment, and it felt like a good choice. This is the Ultra Repairing Sooth Balm Cicaplast Balm <laughs> B5 <laughs> by La roche -Posay. This is pretty thick stuff. It does feel slightly like putting Dulux Emulsion on to start your day, but my skin seems to really like this stuff. And unfortunately, I'm very sorry to report that it turns out, it's just really annoying, isn't it? That like, when you put effort into something, it actually makes a difference. <laughs> and it turns out it's the same for skincare because yesterday I came downstairs and Adam, a man, said to me, it looked very glowing. I said, thank you, I've been looking after my skin. So if, if he's noticed, that things have improved then things must have really improved <laughs> that's all the like skincare skincare but then obviously i whack on a little bit of spf as well this is my current one this is super goop every single face spr shield watery lotion spf 50. um i really love the super goop sun cream but i really regret buying this one because i hate this container it's not like squeezy compared to just like a normal sun cream tube it just doesn't it's really annoying, honestly. So that's a little morning skincare routine at the moment. The evening one is pretty much exactly the same, to be honest, except plus a cleanser and sometimes a retinol. Um, how's your father? We're done here. Anyway, morning, how are you? I hope things are really good. I hope all is well at the moment. I really wanted to make sure I picked up the camera and spent some time with you today because I'm very aware that I'm doing an absolutely terrible job at the moment of spinning spinning all my plates all at once. Plates are cascading all around me. And at this point, I'm just surrounded by <laughs> what feels like many broken plates. I'm doing an absolutely terrible job at keeping on top of everything. Today is for this, for us to just hang out together. There will be absolutely nothing remarkable happening. The plan of action for today is over caffeinate and catch up. So I hope that <laughs> is okay with you. Should I put a little bit of makeup on? I'm trying to take the lid off my eyebrow pen and my hands are so slippy now from all the skincare. There we go. This is another new addition, actually. I needed something to insert some eyebrows onto my face um, and I had heard good things about this. This is the NYX Professional Makeup Lift and Snatch. If there's anything I love to do, it's lifting and snatching. A little bit of powder because the shine is looking maybe a little too shiny. I do look slightly like I've been buffed with a chamois leather. Well, there we go. I did not intend to end up with a face makeup on today. I was going to remain makeupless today. But once you get started, it's like a little ritual, isn't it? What can you do? Oh, let me take out these giant clips. <laughs> Flo is doing that wonderful cat thing at the moment where she's eating the same food every day for like <laughs> years and has loved it. And this week has just been like, actually I don't want this anymore. 
I know you've got like four cartons of it actually, but I don't I don't like this anymore. Why are cats just the most annoying creatures? <laughs> to be fair, it does look slightly different, so I feel like maybe they've changed the formula. More crazy cat lady conversations <laughs> coming to you soon. Yes, I might get through three large cups of coffee by 11 a.m. But I do also have a little green juice <laughs> alongside them these days, uh, which I am almost certain and absolutely tell myself every single day, must cancel out all the damage that the caffeine is doing, right? I absolutely knew this year that I needed to start taking some kind of like proper supplement setup because <laughs> Let's be honest, I'm not, I never have been and never will be a picture of health. That's just, that's just the way it is. I enjoy sitting down, lying down. I enjoy being sedentary. That's how I like to live my life and I'm okay with that. Um, and I love beige food. <laughs> no, our diet is actually really good these days. Obviously Adam is an amazing cook and we eat gorgeous fresh food every single day. So I'm not really so worried about that. I'm just very aware that everybody else seems to take a whole array of lovely intelligent vitamins and minerals <laughs> to supplement their human existence and I wasn't taking anything not even like a chewy blackcurrant tablet these are the shreddy super greens which are a prebiotic beauty and superfood greens blend um, and they're just this like green powder which you blend into 200 mils of water every day and they're so delicious so I literally have this every single day now it's like properly part of my routine and I've got one of these little handheld whizzers to mix it up properly and I feel like a proper health girly you know I might be doing absolutely nothing else but at least I'm taking this mysterious green powder hi yeah I just missed your call about a delivery but just to let you know that I am I am at home so that'll be fine yes it is okay brilliant thank you cheers bye that was being cute about a delivery last time I saw you uh, was to share the news about Rewitched. Um, I have written, I've written a book. I'm currently writing book two. Um, it was so hard to not have talked about that for literally the past two and a half years. I was absolutely terrified of like, it sounds very grand to say announcing it. it. Makes it sound slightly royal, if anything. Um, I'll just like telling you about it officially. The first real proper thing of importance that I wanted to say today is thank you so <laughs> much. It sounds so silly to say thank you because it feels so insignificant and tiny and small for how important it is for me, for you to know how grateful I am. If you pre-ordered the book, um, I mean, it went to number one on Amazon. <laughs> really stupid. So silly and stupid. I am so grateful if you pre-ordered it, if you clicked it to check it out and thought, that sounds good, I'll read that later. If you said congratulations or well done, if you left me a comment, if you sent me a message, I've tried so hard to reply to every single one, but it just completely spiraled out of control and I was freaking out slightly honestly. It was like ticking along really well and really nicely and the reaction and the response was so lovely. I mean I was already very overwhelmed and then I went into therapy and then uh, you can imagine how that went and I came out an hour later and it was it was sitting at number six <laughs> in the book charts and I was just like on, on the bus back home from therapy just like no one on this bus knows that my book is currently sitting at number six on Amazon. So since pre-sale day, since it was sent out into the world, my little baby, um, I am not exaggerating when I say my feet have not touched the ground. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can tell you about any of these things just yet. I promise I will, obviously, as soon as I am allowed to. Um, but it's basically just been... There's been a little kind of feeling in the air that maybe it was slightly underestimated and now there's a lot of eyeballs looking at it. So um, I've had a lot of meetings and phone calls and 
that's kind of what has been taking up a large chunk of my time at the moment is um, kind of just on this very intense jet stream, not really knowing <laughs> where it's heading. I feel very much like I'm just swept up in a current right now. So I'm just trying to go with the flow um, and not get overwhelmed. But I think in fact, I'm just existing in a constant state of overwhelm. <laughs> it's very hard to differentiate between the two, but I'm leaning towards the latter. <laughs> but we are pretty much at the last of the structural writing edits now, which is simultaneously very exciting and a huge relief. Um, but obviously also just means that we are edging ever closer to other people reading this book, which I know is the general idea of having written a book, um, but I think I kind of forgot about that part. But at the same time as that, I am now also picking up writing book two. Um, so just as a little caveat, if I am not showing up as much as I should be online, I am, I am really, really sorry about that. I just don't know how to split my time at the moment because I'm also supposed to be planning a wedding. I'll figure it out. <laughs> This is more just a pep talk for myself. I will figure it out. If you too are feeling overwhelmed, here's me telling you, we're gonna figure it out. Hold my hand, we're gonna figure this out. It's lovely having an active mind and an active imagination in many ways, and in other ways, it's extremely annoying. And I wish I could just not overthink every aspect of my life. If I could just have a crumb of underthinking, that would be so wonderful. Okay, I think that's probably our healthy dose of existential crisis for one video. So shall we go and get some work done now? Lovely. So obviously take what I'm saying here with an enormous pinch of salt, maybe also pepper and vinegar. I think it's fair to say uh, every single day of this process has been a huge learning curve for me. And obviously I'm very much learning on the job. Basically with Rewitched, we're currently up to the stage of editing, like structural edits, like developmental edits, basically untying every single knot possible. And I think we're on maybe the third or fourth round of that. And it's basically a back and forth between me and my editor. So obviously that's the cat. Obviously the first kind of hurdle of editing that you get through is just you on your own. Um, and once you finish that precious first draft, you then go all the way back to the beginning and rewrite it as you're going. While I was writing Rewitched before anything had really happened with it, I was very much breaking the golden rule because I didn't I didn't know this was the golden rule at the time. I've since learned though that while you're writing your first draft, you should absolutely not go back and start editing what you've already written until you get to the end. One of the most like helpful things that I have heard on the internet multiple times is that the first drafts probably the first couple of drafts are just for you to tell yourself the story like that as soon as i heard that i was like that is golden advice so please heed my advice there if you are currently writing that is so fundamental i really got caught up in wanting it to start perfect right from the beginning and after i'd written kind of the first you know five chapters or something I went back and started editing those rather than just keep plodding on and get that story on paper. So I did a lot of early editing that I should not have been doing. It's a complete waste of time. It's procrastinating while convincing yourself that you're still being productive. But then obviously the, the editing process hasn't even really quite begun at that point because you've had no feedback or other eyes on it at all. Um, so that's like a very private personal editing chunk to get it to where you want it to be and then it becomes a more like collaborative effort with an agent, editor, etc. So I think we're now on either round three or round four of these kind of story edits are kind of what I like to think of them as, which is basically just making sure that it's a really good story that makes a lot of sense. All the crap's been cut out from kind of like structural story developmental edits. It then moves on to a whole new team of editors basically, and it goes into line edits or copy edits. And that is really like basically looking at it with the tightest, closest possible microscope and checking for not only like grammatical errors or kind of, you know, word choices that don't sit quite right and also things on a smaller scale. So things like, 
oh well on the page below you referenced that she pulled up the strap of her red dress but then on the next page you said that she put her hand in a pocket of her jeans like you know things like that which we might have kind of become slightly numb to but then if you're approaching it as a fresh reader you would notice those little discrepancies so let's get cracking i hope that's interesting by the way i don't know whether everybody's going to be interested in this i feel like it might be quite a small <laughs> niche group of you guys that want to hear the kind of ins and outs of this process if i highlight this top comment here you'll be able to see it has a little line which then links up to the bit that she's highlighted in the paragraph and then she can add a little bit of it'll either be a feedback or she will have like deleted a little bit changed some punctuation added in a question that's popped up while she's been reading um, this first one is actually a really nice example for me to show you she said no matter how many times i read rewitch this opening paragraph will always give me goosebumps i love it so much so that's really cute but then as you can see some of them are literally just like a deleted full stop an added and a deleted comma so those ones i can just absolutely whiz through and they won't take long at all okay i've officially found the best one to show you to sign off for today in today's news i'm extremely jealous of a fictional fox <laughs> So this rather mysterious looking delivery just arrived from B&Q. This is my latest little adventure that I have for some reason decided I'll be absolutely fine to do uh, when I've got absolutely no evidence or knowledge to back up that prediction. So this is coving, which is basically like the trim that you quite often get along the top of a room. And here I am going to attempt to do just that. Oh, these bits are actually a little bit easier to show you. So I bought these as just kind of like a sample to see how it looked against the wall. So these are the ready cut little corner pieces that you can slice in so that they meet in the corner. Hang on, if I put you down, I can show you. These slot together. See, this is where my brain's gonna struggle with like, oh, there we go, look, like that. So this will slot together in the corner and it'll be like a nice little bit of character and detail along the top of the room as easy as that and i think it will particularly look very nice across the top of the bookshelf i think it's going to be good i've got every faith personally i think it'll be a really nice little detail i'm not sure why i'm just waving this around the room it's not really showing me anything so stay tuned for that we'll revisit that in another day So top of my to-do list for tomorrow is that I actually need to go back to the library. I've got some books which are this close to being overdue. I think I've got like two days to take them back. Um, and I've read them all, so there's no point in me extending them. So I'll have to take those back tomorrow. Before I do though, I thought I would give you a little rundown of my most recent library haul and also a little secondhand book haul. If I pop you here on the footrest that's gonna be all right isn't it i've got quite a selection i'm not gonna give you like a full um like full review of all of these but maybe just a few reading ideas these two are absolute five star recommendations from me i'll give you a brief rundown this one i talked about in my 10 before the end um i've had this on my list for absolutely ages this is orpheus builds a girl by heather parry i didn't get around to reading it until a couple of weeks ago because i had to wait to request it at the library if you're looking for something a little bit different that is gonna feel uncomfortable and kind of like get really under your skin and kind of seep into your bones a little bit if you're looking for a creepy little read this is gonna tick that box. This gets more and more disturbing as you go on. It's basically about a doctor who, when he's younger, has a vision of his dead grandmother presenting his future wife to him. Obviously there's a lot more context to it than that, but then one day while he's working as a doctor, this young girl comes in for treatment and he recognizes her as the girl from his dream. He's unable to save her from, I think it's tuberculosis, but he decides that he actually has the science to be able to bring her back to life. Um, it is really disturbing but so compelling i couldn't put this down it took me a little while to get into it because the kind of setup for the story felt a little bit slow at the beginning but from about a third of the way in <laughs> i was morbidly fascinated and the other one that i definitely have to recommend to you today is emma klein the guest her other two books the girls and daddy i think i gave both of those five stars and this is an easy five stars for me i think her writing is so compelling and so addictive it's hard to describe what actually happens in this book it's one of those where it's just like a slightly unhinged female character at the center of it 
um, but it's such a tense, gripping read. She's basically biding her time to be able to go back to the guy that's kind of dumped her, I guess, um, and kind of worm her way back into his life because she benefits from everything that he gives her. Um, it's kind of like a mystery of her backstory and never quite get the answers that you want. It's very tense and it kind of feels like you're kind of gripping onto the edge of something with your nails the whole time you're reading it. You're kind of waiting for this like, big dramatic discovery to happen or for her to completely blow everything up around her but she's very skilled at manipulating everyone that she encounters um it's just a really really good book so i picked up the pumpkin spice cafe because this was on a little stand in my local library and i was like oh i've seen that everywhere and obviously pumpkin spice cafe i'll take it thank you very much sir i thought this was going to be a really wholesome warming lovely tale uh, which it was to some extent but then it just took a spicy left turn which i wasn't expecting um it just kind of threw me off a little bit if you're telling me that it's a pumpkin spice cafe i'm not expecting to hear about the ins and outs of your widgets do you know what i mean i think the author definitely prioritized spice over pumpkin and i was looking for more pumpkin <laughs> and then i've done really well in the charity shops <laughs> for books recently actually i popped in with a friend um just to have a little browse and somehow came out with three and then picked up another one the other day as well um so the three that i picked up in oxfam i picked up magpie by elizabeth day and i think this is like a little thriller which i haven't done a thriller for a really long time so i'm looking forward to this as like a little a little palette cleanser when marissa meets jake everything falls into place but then their new lodger kate arrives something isn't right about her. Ooh, here comes the mystery. It's the way she looks at Jake, keeps her toothbrush right next to theirs, and constantly asks questions about the baby they're trying for. If a stranger tried to, to touch our toothbrushes, I too would have an issue with that. I'm hoping this will be an engrossing little slightly spooky tale. I don't know why I always end up sitting on the floor. Um, this one is my current read actually, hence the bookmark. This is Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan. From the cover, this seems like something that will be very up my street, but maybe a slight branch off what I would normally go for. Like I love stories of like coming of age, girlhood, female friendship, that kind of thing. Um, this seems to basically be the boy version of that, which is, a lot more uncommon, I would say. Everyone has a Tully Dawson, the friend who defines your life. In the summer of 1986, James and Tully ignite a friendship based on music, film, and the rebel spirit. With school over, they rush towards a magical weekend of youthful excess in Manchester, played out against the greatest soundtrack ever recorded. And there is a vow made to go at life differently. 30 years on, the phone rings. Tully has news. I also picked up this, which I'm really excited about. I love Lex Crouch's books. And I think this is one of their newest ones. Maybe not the newest one, because I think that's a YA. Emily Lawrence is a liar. She's not really a governess. She's not polite, she's not polished, and she's never taught a child in her life. This position was meant to be her sister's, brilliant, kind Amy, who inexplicably does actually like children. But with Amy unwell, Emily must put aside her anger and pretend to be someone she's not, for as long as it takes to earn enough to cover the doctor bills. The plan is simple, to take what she can from her severe brooding employer, Captain Edwards, and get out. That is, as long as she doesn't get involved in the family drama. Lex Croucher is just one of those safe bet authors for me. Like, I love everything that I've read of theirs. I enjoy every single story, every single character. Um, so the fact that this was too good in the charity shop, I'm all over it. And this one was actually something that Adam picked up, uh, but I'm gonna mention it anyway because it's a fun little book. Uh, this is by an illustrator called Katana Comics, who is like a viral sensation on Instagram and has been for years. And when Adam and I first started dating, I think that was when she was like just about starting to really blow up on Instagram and she does these kind of cartoon couples and obviously when this kind of first came out online um, Adam and I were like oh it's us. So we actually have one of her artworks up here on the walls which I love that was a gift from Adam years ago um, and he spotted this in the charity shop and he was like well you have to get it. They're really sweet, they're really funny, they're really cute um, and I'm a really big fan of her work and also it's hilarious. Uh, if you happen to be like a dark brunette girl and a bearded man couple, <laughs> um, these are extra relatable. Hopefully you can pause it and have a little look because I love this one so much. <laughs> it's so cute. Anyway, they really mean a lot to me, these little illustrations. So that was a bit of like a, a little miracle find, to be honest. Very cute. Oh, and do you know what else I meant to show you? One moment, please. The book that I have literally just finished. I finished this yesterday. I'm not sure I will ever recover. This is One Day by David Nichols, um, an absolute global sensation. This should revoke all rights that I ever have of being like a book content creator because somehow <laughs> this completely evaded my attention <laughs> for the last like 15 years. I knew it existed and I knew it was a very famous book 
Um, and I remember stacks and stacks of copies of it selling when I worked at Waterstones. I like really vividly remember restacking it constantly on the bookshelf and putting it through the till all the time, which is really funny. Anyway, a few weeks ago, I got invited to a Netflix screening of the first three episodes because it's now been turned into a Netflix show. It's also a movie from a few years ago, but I kind of thought to myself, seeing as it's such a phenomenon of a book, I feel like I owe it to myself to read it first before I dive in and experience <laughs> the full show. Like I want to be fully invested in the book first and I've been reading it for the past kind of week or so. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm suing for emotional damage. I kind of knew about its reputation of being a very heartbreaking book. I've never cried reading something like I cried. <laughs> I was sitting at one end of the sofa and Adam was at the other end and he was on his PlayStation. And so he'd like been sucked in <laughs> into that turned around to look at me to tell me something. I was literally sitting there like bawling. He was like, what is happening? Are you okay? I was just like, this is the saddest book in the world. I absolutely loved it. Like this was a five stars from me. I was so invested in these characters, but my God, I was not ready for the amount that this made me cry. Like even thinking about it now, I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> and now I can't work out whether I need to like dive straight into the show while I'm still thinking about it so much and I'm still so invested in these in these characters or whether that's a really bad idea. So there you go. Three five star recommendations for a me to sink your teeth into. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm procrastinating. <laughs> so I'm now, oh, this is our engagement banner. Still up on the stairs. I can't, I can't bring myself to throw it away. Um, I'm now forcing myself back to my desk. mum texted me earlier to say that she had sent me a book just like completely out of the blue um to say that she'd read a book and thought that I would love it and that she had bought it and sent it to me and that it was arriving today I think that's what's just turned up so your guess is as good as mine so I'm very intrigued to find out what this is should we find out Flo what have I been sent it's is it a hardback oh it's a hardback this looks very beautiful. <gasps> Alice Hoffman. She wrote Practical Magic. The Invisible Hour. I haven't even heard of this, but what an absolutely beautiful cover. Mia wished she was in that place right now, in the field where some flowers grew, where it might be possible to be who you wish to be and you could read books all day long and no one would say a word about it. A place where no one would punish you for being who you were. 16 year old Ivy is pregnant and alone. Cast out by her family, she seeks refuge in a community where she believes will offer peace and safety, a world away from the life she led in, Bos in Boston. Ivy's daughter Mia has known only the claustrophobic life of the community. Breaking rules carry serious consequences, but stumbling upon a world beyond is enticing and intoxicating. Mia will begin to discover that readers and writers affect one another in mysterious ways, that time is more fluid than she could possibly imagine, and love is far stronger than any chains that bind us. That sounds great. Okay, excuse the hair. We're officially in evening mode right now. I have a little fun little task that I am giving myself to do this evening, <laughs> like a little retriever. Something that I have been meaning to do for probably years at this point, in all honesty, the procrastination on this one is strong. Um, this is actually really heavy. I really <laughs> want and need to sort out my pin collection because this is the pin collection and the pin displaying of a madman. <laughs> They're falling out left, right and centre um, and this is exactly why, oh great, I've just stabbed myself with that one so that's a really good start. Okay so currently as I just showed you my pin collection looks like this. I've got a few more but they're on like coats and bags and stuff so as I find them I can add them onto this new setup. So I bought myself a couple of new little storage options. The first one I picked up I thought this was really clever. I got this off Etsy and it's just an embroidery hoop with fabric on it but I thought that would actually be really nice to then have on the wall. And then the other option I've got which has actually already got a couple of pins on it, this is just like a little acrylic stand that I got from Etsy also and I thought this would be nice on my desk. So I'm gonna have the banner, the hoop and the little stand and then I've also got a Disney lanyard as well. As a side note I'm currently trying to convince Adam that it will be the best possible celebration to celebrate my book news. Uh, we want to book a trip to like celebrate obviously because it's like literally the biggest thing that's ever happened to me um and I want to you know go on a massive trip to celebrate that and where better than Disney World. I think I'll just put on an episode of something and have a nice quiet half an hour 
sorting out my pins. Rock and roll, baby. <laughs> Just where it was needed Claimed in black as night Cloistered in injustice Dead In the eye of time Nobody is losing Faces merge and change But your face remains the same Here's the little system that I've ended up going for. So I've decided that this little hoop, <laughs> you can see where I've like put them in the wrong places and changed my mind. This little hoop I've decided I would really like to have on the wall. So I've decided to make this our travel one because that's that's a cool theme to have on the wall, I think. So we're gonna have to fill this up a little bit more, but we've got pins from our trip to New England, Copenhagen, New York, the first visit to Walt Disney World, <laughs> Uh, Centre Park's one, and this is York. Uh, I don't even remember getting that, but I'm gonna have to try my best to pick up some more like destination pins. This one, seeing as this is the one that's gonna be on my desk, I've decided to make this kind of literary, a little bit inspiring. There's some quotes on there which I really love, a little stack of books, a little Matilda which I picked up from the Quentin Blake exhibition I went to with my mum, a little writer, typewriter, copy of Little Women, also a vlogging camera which doesn't really fit with the rest, but very apt for me so that's going to sit on my desk and then the old banner which is what had everything on it looking at all these now i'm like how on earth did all of these fit on this one banner but i decided this would be really cute for all my proper big disney ones the disney pins are so bulky because they all have like jazzy things on them that move and stuff i love this one i'd forgotten about how cool this pin is it's like a legit autograph book and it even has a little dangly pen on it disney pins are kind of amazing actually and then i've kind of got my magic-y general ones over here and then these are also just like super random ones and i think i'm gonna have to actually get another little banner because i'd like to have a separate disney one just so they're a little bit less chaotic and a bit more on display because it's such a shame when they're all covering each other up and you can't see all the little details in them. And then I can pop all my witchy ones on there too and then that'll be like a nice, still quite a slightly chaotic one, but um, a little bit more organised for my particularly special ones. Oh, and then I have separated off a few Disney ones which I wouldn't be averse to trading. I've had so much screen time today, my eyes feel like they've, you know, like that old 90s thing if you'll get square eyes, whatever that was ever supposed to mean. I think it might have actually happened to me today, but I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. It's been so lovely to spend some time with you again. But I think Adam should be home pretty much any time now. So looking forward to some nice dinner. And I think we're probably gonna watch, we're watching Big Boys at the moment. So good. It's on 4OD. If you like Dairy Girls, same kind of sense of humor, same kind of extremely heartwarming, relatable, uh, like down to earth comedy. It's so touching and so wonderful. And I highly, recommend it this has probably been a really long one i feel like i've talked at you a lot today so thanks for listening love ya see you very soon